Helmut? Forgotten Figures, Episode 2. Helmut James von Moltke. Uh, the James part's very uh, important because otherwise you'll confuse him with Helmut von Moltke the Elder or Helmut von Moltke the Younger. Both uh, ancestors to Helmut James von Moltke. Uh, the two older people were great German uh, military figures, both uh, field marshals, both generals. They uh, were known for introducing very uh, new techniques onto the battlefield. They rose to great f fame uh, for their conquests. Um, Helmut James von Moltke is obviously the descendant of those two former military figures, and he was an attorney uh, in Nazi Germany. Uh, he died at the age of 37. He was executed by the Third Reich for his ideas. Um, what's interesting about him and what I love about him is he uh, embodied two, two very, not two, two, 22, but two very important things. Uh, the first is the fact that we can do good right now, wherever we are. Uh, that's the probably the number one lesson I have taken away from reading about this gentleman is the opportunity for each individual to do good regardless of where we are and regardless of some future thing happening. We can take action right now to do good. Um, he was a contemporary of, of Bonhoeffer. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Bonhoeffer. Uh, he was, this is a great book if you haven't read that yet. Um, but Bonhoeffer was part of a group that was planning to assassinate Hitler and they attempted it and failed and, and all of them that were caught were executed for that attempt. Von Moltke was a contemporary of Bonhoeffer, but he chose a nonviolent approach um, to doing good within the Third Reich. He was actually an attorney uh, in the German legal system and he chose to use that position of authority and, and uh, privilege to help Jewish people in other countries outside of Germany escape um, and and leave their countries before uh, they could be put into concentration camps. And it's estimated that he saved uh, upwards of 10,000 or more uh, Jewish lives in this covert manner. Um, so I, that's the first lesson to take away from him is that you can do good right now wherever you are in a nonviolent way. Um, and I think that's very important uh, for us to hear. Um, the second thing that should land on us or landed on me and is important for us to, to consider is know what you stand for. This gentleman had very uh, strong beliefs to what it meant to be a Christian and he lived and acted on those beliefs. And he was ultimately executed, took a slug in the back of the head, um, for those beliefs. Um, so that's very convicting, very challenging for me. Uh, and it should be for all of us to ask ourselves, you know, what do we stand for? Um, what do we believe? And are we willing to stand by those principles? Uh, I think my favorite quote of him is he wrote a letter 11 days before he was executed. And in it, he wrote this. He said, I, I do not stand before the German court as a Protestant, nor as a great landowner, nor as an aristocrat, nor as a German, but as a Christian and nothing else. And he wrote in a second letter to his wife of just a few days before he was executed that he didn't feel sadness, but that he felt great joy knowing that he was being executed for his ideas and that in those ideas he felt the presence of God. Um, very compelling figure. Uh, again, there's links below to read more about him. I've included a link below to this wonderful collection of letters that he wrote to his wife, uh, Freya. Um, during 1939 to 1945, he penned a lot of private letters to his wife and she actually hid them in the beehives 
at their estate in order to uh, keep them out of getting uh, obtained by the Third Reich. Um, wonderful collection of letters. It runs the gamut from love letters uh, to firsthand accounts of, of seeing the dis destruction that was going on around Germany uh, to very private confessions of struggle that he was having as far as staying the course and, and, and believing in what he was doing. Just a wonderful, wonderful collection. And uh, I would recommend you pick this up and read through it. So that is episode two of Forgotten Figures, Helmuth James von Moltke. And I think he holds a special place in my heart because his, he's got my last name in his first name. So click the like button, uh, subscribe if you would like to, share this with people who you think this might be an encouragement to. Again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.